How to Make a Number Puppet. To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch in glue. All of the dolls will make it shake. If you wanna be in the know and to play like a pro, subscribe to Puppet Nerd. Welcome back puppet nerds, Adam Krutinger here and today we're going to learn how to make some really cool puppets. Now last year on my birthday we made this birthday cake puppet and I've seen a ton of people do some really amazing things using that pattern and technique. This year I'm turning 34 so I thought what better to do than the numbers 3 and 4. Now these are styles of puppets that you commonly see on Sesame Street. Sometimes they're numbers like this, other times they're even letters. And they use a couple different techniques. Sometimes they're a traditional puppet with your hand inside it moving the mouth. And other times it's kind of like a mechanism where they use a couple thumbtacks and a rubber band to move the mouth. We might do that in another video in the future. Let me know down below if that's something you want to see. But today we're going to be making it out of foam with a moving mouth that uses your hand. The first thing you have to do is pick out the font that you want to use. I have a link down below with a couple examples of different fonts that I think work good. But you can really use any font you want. And even on Sesame Street, there doesn't seem to be a consistent font that they use. I found a font that I liked and blew it up to about this size. These are about 19 inches. And kind of the reason why I picked that size is because it fit the foam that I have. You go a little bit bigger and you could maybe even go a little bit smaller if you want. But the one thing I tried to make sure of is that the width of this was at least five inches. Much thinner than that, you might have trouble carving it out to get your hand inside of it. And the foam we're gonna use today is just a foam from a couch cushion. This piece is about four inches wide. So first thing I'm gonna do is trace out my pattern pieces. So there we go. I'm gonna try to arrange it in a way that I can fit both of these on. There we go, that looks good. So I know the three is backward. That is just so I can fit this onto my piece and I'm gonna flip it over after I cut it out. So first thing I'm gonna do is trace it out with this Sharpie. So there we have it all traced out. Now the next thing to do is to cut these pieces out. Now one tool we use a lot on this channel is the turkey carver. It's great for cutting big pieces of foam just like this. And you can use a turkey carver if you want. My only trouble with this is since these are numbers, they have to have really clean straight perpendicular edges. And it can be hard to make sure that this is always pointed perfectly up and down. You might accidentally get some bevels, which is why I really like it for carving things, but for something that has to be so clean cut. But if you don't have a bandsaw, you can use the turkey carver. You just have to pay extra close attention to making sure your edges are perfectly perpendicular. Now let me grab my bandsaw. So here is my bandsaw. Make sure when using a bandsaw to follow all the guidelines and the directions that come along with it. And be sure to wear some eye protection too. Now as far as the blade, I noticed pretty much most wood blades that I've tested have worked for me. Though I will say a higher tooth count on the blade will help a little bit too. It's mostly a matter of just paying attention to where you're cutting and going slowly. All right, let's get started. Now there is the three and there is my four. Now you'll notice I had to cut the four right here in order to get into this spot there. So all I'm gonna do is glue this back together. And since this whole thing is gonna be covered in fabric anyway, you'll never even notice that there was a seam there. And there we go. All right, now that the glue is dry on this, the next thing I'm gonna do is start carving out the spot for my hand to go inside of this puppet. Now on this one, I think I'm gonna have the mouth be right here and two eyes there. And on this one, I think I'm gonna try to do the mouth up here and then I'll put the eyes up here just to make them look like very different characters. So, but anyway, since this is solid foam, I have to carve a hole for my hand. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I like to use a little PVC pipe here as a little bit of a stencil. 
so I don't carve too much. I'm gonna carve to the inside of this though, because I don't want the walls to be too thin. This is about a four inch circle. So anything you wanna trace that's about that size should work well. And I'll do the same thing here. It's gonna be a little bit of an angle, I think. Probably like that. That should be good. And I'm gonna use a persona blade and just start carving it out. This part is pretty annoying, but it's important to do well. here. I'm gonna cut the mouth in so that I can maybe get to it from the inside here. So there we go, this is looking pretty good inside there. I accidentally nicked it a little bit, so I'm gonna glue that in a little bit, but it's gonna be fine since this is gonna all be covered with fabric anyway. But now let me go on to the number three. And I think I'm gonna have this, I think I'm gonna do like a, almost like a beaker style mouth, and I'm gonna do it right here, I think. Kinda like that. All right, here I go. So I'm having a little trouble getting in there, so I think what I'm gonna do is split it open from the back and carve out some of that space and then glue the edges back together. So let's see if that works. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now that we have this moving. So I'm gonna glue this seam back together. And there we go, they look all set and ready. So now I'm gonna cut out some mouth plates and put them in. Okay, we have our mouth plates cut out. Now what I'm gonna do is cover them with fabric. Today I'm gonna use this black velvet. Now I'm gonna glue the backs of this to seal it up. And now for the backing, I'm gonna use this black twill fabric. All right, now let's glue one of these mouth plates in. All right, now let's get number three. Now it's time to cover these. I think I'm gonna do the three in blue and the four in magenta. Now I'm gonna cover these in kind of an unconventional way that I typically cover a puppet. I'm gonna use a lot of spray adhesive and I'm gonna do it kind of like a sandwich. So I'm gonna start with the sides first. So the first thing I need to do is measure this thickness and then I'm gonna cut a strip that can go all the way around the perimeter of both of these. Let's get started.
They're there, they're all covered, but now what I need to do is stitch all the way around the perimeter of these puppets. But since they're already covered, I have to use the ladder stitch in order to get in there. So we're gonna stitch them from the outside right now. Now I'm just gonna pick the seams a little bit. All right, they're looking pretty good. Next, I'm gonna glue the fabric around the mouth down to the mouth plates. And for this, I'm gonna use some contact cement. Okay, now the puppets are pretty much done. All we have to do now is make the eyes. Now, if you click right here, I have a playlist on a ton of different videos on how to make puppet eyes. Everything from eyelids to pupils to even a perfect stippling paint job. And now I'm gonna make a set for these two puppets here. Here's some eyes that I already cast out of plastic and already did my stippling paint job on them. Now let's get them dressed up. Hey, you know, they say age is just a number. Yeah, but for Adam, it's a really big number. Ho, 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 ho. You know, this is probably gonna be the only video we're ever in. No, we'll be back in nine years. Why do you say? Ugh, he's not very good at math. So here they are, the number puppets, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. This was a really fun project to do for my birthday. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out the video I did last year. That was a really easy project that I think you could do yourself. Some even say it was a piece of cake. While you're making your puppets, if there's something you want to listen to while you're building, Cameron Garrity, who if you know this channel, you should be a fan of his, he started a new podcast called This Should Have Been a Phone Call. I was a guest on it last month and we want to make sure you guys get a chance to listen to it if you haven't yet. So be sure to check that out and subscribe on iTunes. And if you're ever looking for more puppet projects or how to learn puppetry, be sure to check out PuppetNerd.com. There we have tons of tutorials on building puppets and how to do puppetry. I'm also doing a new series on a whole bunch of different film gear on how to make your own puppet shows. And there are hundreds of puppet videos on this channel if you need more. And be sure to subscribe if you enjoy it because there's a lot more coming. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.